National Guard Bureau who is relinquishing his responsibility. Participating in today's review, from left to right, is the United States Army Band Pershing Zone. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing Zone provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Colonel Bruce Pulver and led by Drum Major Daniel Ord. Elements of the Honor Guard include Honor Guard Company, commanded by Captain Jack King and led by Sergeant First Class Alfonso Roman. Next on line is Animal Company, commanded by Captain Troy Schumann and led by Staff Sergeant Dennis White. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit as soldiers kept their position in formation by dressing on the colors. At the center of our formation and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Sergeant Sean Burke. Next on line is Air Force Flight A, commanded by Captain Abigail Barge and led by Technical Sergeant Michael Mendoza. Next on line is Air Force Flight B, commanded by Lieutenant Andrew Packin and led by Technical Sergeant Matthew Cox. The last element online dressed in the Continental Musicians uniform is the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The Corps is led today by Drum Major Barrett Newman. To the right of the formation is the Presidential Salute Battery, commanded by Staff Sergeant Anthony Bennett and led by Staff Sergeant Matthew Doughty. And to the rear of the formation are the 56 state and territorial flags of the United States, commanded by Captain Joe Ryan and led by Staff Sergeant Tyler Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, Moving into position with his staff is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Colonel Thomas J. Kilbride, commander, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony, General Daniel R. Hokinson, 29th Chief of the National Guard Bureau, accompanied by the host, General Charles Q. Brown, Jr., the 21st Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as honors are rendered and remain standing for the invocation offered by Chaplain Colonel Retired Matt Polakowski.
Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Paul Lukowski. Almighty God, charity begins in one's own household. And so it has always been our local men and women, soldiers, pilots, police, and their protectors, and servants of the common good, whom communities respect and trust the most. And so God, at this morning's relinquishment of responsibility of the Chief of the National Guard Bureau, we thank you for the service of General Dan Hokinson, as well as his wife Kelly and their kids, Tori, Danny, and McKinnon, and the many selfless sacrifices they have all offered for the good of our local communities, our country, and the world. With this final act of General Hokinson's, we ask your blessings upon him as he lays down the mantle of national responsibility and public service, and finally relaxes a little on the throttle to come in for a soft and pleasant landing. But you have shown us, Lord, that courage never quits. It just transforms into a new kind of service for your kingdom and for our country. And so General, for General Hokinson, as he continues with other leaders who do just that, we say thank you and amen. While honors were being conducted, a flyover was also being conducted by Army and Air Force National Guard units from D.C., Maryland, New Hampshire, North Carolina, Ohio, and Virginia in honor of General Hokinson. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the playing of the United States National Anthem.
Sir, the color is the president. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, taking their positions on the field for the relinquishment of responsibility is the Chief of the National Guard Bureau, General Hokinson, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Brown, and Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chief of the National Guard Bureau, Tony Whitehead. Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chief of the National Guard Bureau, Tony Whitehead, will pass the National Guard colors to General Hokinson for the last time. General Hokinson will pass the National Guard colors to General Brown, relinquishing responsibility of the office of the Chief of the National Guard Bureau. General Brown will pass the National Guard colors back to Senior Enlisted Advisor Tony Whitehead, and Senior Enlisted Advisor Whitehead will return the National Guard colors to the color bearer.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Please be seated.
ladies and gentlemen, General Brown. If we could give the, uh, the Honor Garden Band another round of applause. <laughs> extremely, extremely well done. You know, the exercise for the militia of the Massachusetts Bay Conley, a 1758 pamphlet laying out training instructions and notes said, every man therefore that wishes to secure his own freedom and thinks it his duty to defend that of his country should, as he prides himself in being a free citizen, think it his truest honor to be a soldier citizen. The legacy of this militia spirit can be found in our National Guard today. Citizen soldiers who believe it is their duty to take up arms to defend our freedom and our nation. Today, we gather to honor the remarkable service of one of these citizen soldiers, General Dan Hokinson. Before I go any further, I'd like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to everyone here today to recognize General Hokinson and his family. I'd like to thank the extensive list of distinguished visitors, to our elected officials, Department of Defense and Intelligence Community leadership, general officers, flag officers, senior enlisted leaders, directors, senior civilians, thank you for your leadership. We also welcome ambassadors, ministers of defense, chiefs of defense, and representatives from our state partnership program nations. And thank you to the state adjutant generals for being here today. Sharina and I would uh, like to thank the Hokuston family, Dan, Kelly, and their three children for their unwavering commitment and unparalleled sacrifice. Kelly has been uh, a, tire a tireless advocate for guard families and a teacher for over 30 years. A tenure as a National Guard, uh, Army National Guard spouse. Kelly, thank you so much for your, your 30 years of uh, dedicated service uh, to our communities. Uh, your steadfast love and care have been uh, vital to uh, Dan's success. And to your children, Victoria, Daniel, McKinnon, and their families. Men have chosen this life, but you've supported your dad and mom selflessly over the years. And all three of you followed in your dad's footsteps and served our nation in uniform. Thank you as well. For the entire Hokinson family, your service and sacrifice have meant a great deal, not only to your parents, your communities, the National Guard, but most importantly to our country. When asked for guidance on establishing proper military policy during the Continental Congress, George Washington laid out a dual system consisting of a small standing national force and a group of well-organized militias. Washington said, by keeping up in peace, a well-regulated and disciplined militia, we shall take the fairest and best method to preserve for a long time to come the happiness, dignity, and independence of our country. The National Guard, since colonial, the times of colonial militias, has preserved the happiness, dignity, and independence of our country. The Guard's commitment to our nation is always ready, always there. Every day, they demonstrate their unwavering obligation protecting and serving the American people. The Guard has played a pivotal role in every major conflict since the Revolutionary War. And they have performed a vital function in the rapid responses to national disasters, civil unrest, and public health crises. The Guard founded one of our military's most successful initiatives the State Partnership Program. For over 30 years, the State Partnership Program has fostered long-term relationships that enhance global security and cooperation. Through 96 partnerships with 106 countries around the world. 
Today, we are honored to have representatives from several of our state partnerships in attendance, showcasing the program's success and demonstrating General Holkins' many contributions to our National Guard. Now, General Holkins' tenure as the uh, Chief of the National Guard Bureau has been marked by exceptional leadership and transformative accomplishments. Its efforts led to the passage of more than 50 legislative initiatives, focusing on his four principal priorities, people, readiness, modernization, and reform. Under his guidance, the National Guard responded to over 1,900 incidents a year, including historic wildfires in 2020, hurricanes, tornadoes, typhoons, and flooding in 2022. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the National Guard administered almost 16 million vaccine doses, conducted 35 million tests and screenings, disinfected 71,000 facilities, and supported over 1,000 food banks. In addition, they delivered over 1 million meals to the American public. General Hokanson also oversaw significant National Guard overseas mobilizations, including efforts to evacuate Afghan citizens during the largest non-combatant evacuation in history. His visionary leadership has ensured that the National Guard remains a vital and respected component of our national defense today and well into the future. His time as chief also caps off an incredible career, marked by forward thinking, high standards, moral courage, and unwavering character. General Hokanson epitomizes the spirit of a citizen soldier. As one who felt his duty to defend our country and uphold the freedoms we enjoy today. Dan, your strategic vision, steadfast leadership, and tireless advocacy have left an indelible mark on the National Guard and our national security. Thank you and, and Kelly for your extraordinary contributions. Shreen and I wish you and your family the very best as you open the next chapter. God bless the Hokerson family. God bless all of you and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, General Hokinson. Chairman and Shereen Brown, fellow Joint Chiefs and spouses, allies and partners, distinguished guests, family and friends, I'd like to start by thanking you. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for your faith in me and this incredible organization. Thank you for your support for the past four years, for my time in uniform, and for all the days that made this day possible. As the chairman mentioned, I'd like to begin again with a round of applause for our National Guard Bureau protocol team, the Army protocol team, the Army band, the Old Guard, the Air Force Honor Guard, and the countless folks who worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make this event happen. Thank you for all your hard work. No one who wears the cloths of this nation serves alone. We are woven into a community and a family that began long before we were born, and one that will continue long after we're gone. It's an honor to be part of our nation's military legacy. I will always be grateful to my West Point classmates who stood with me on the plane at West Point on July 1st, 1982, when we first took the solemn oath to support and defend our Constitution, and this incredible journey began. This journey was made possible by the support of family and would have been impossible without them. I would especially like to thank my wife, Kelly, for her love and support and her fierce advocacy for military service members and their families. And those I am most proud of, my children and grandchildren. In just a few minutes, I'll go from being known as Chief to being known as Kelly's husband, Victoria, Danny, and McKinnon's dad, and Papa, and I couldn't be more blessed. 
It's been an honor to serve alongside some of the greatest senior leaders our military has produced. The support of my fellow Joint Chiefs, combatant commanders, the adjutants general, and leaders at every level. The insight, advocacy, and perspective you provide is a testament to the power of the United States military. You are living proof that we are the land of opportunity. If you seize the opportunity to serve our nation, and you seize the opportunity to learn, and you seize the opportunity to lead and make the tough calls your job requires, you will see what our nation does better than anyone else. We find and we forge great military leaders, and I'm humbled to have shared your company. I'd also like to thank the senior leaders of our allies and partners, particularly those in the state partnership program. For more than 30 years, we have trained, deployed, worked with, and learned from each other, not just as partners, but as friends. Today and always, we stand united in support of a stable and peaceful world. We are strongest as a joint force, side by side with our allies and partners. I also want to thank the key members of our NGB leadership team, Mark Sasseville, John Jensen, Mike Lowe, our 54 adjutants general, G.G. Wills, and all of Team 29, the incredible people who supported me as the 29th Chief of the National Guard Bureau. Thank you for your extraordinary leadership and counsel. You were an exceptional team. I would especially like to recognize our senior enlisted advisor, Tony Whitehead, who has been instrumental to the success of Team 29. His role reflects the pinnacle of enlisted leadership. It's a role befitting an organization that makes up 20% of the joint force and a role he served exceptionally well. Finally, I'd like to thank the governors and members of Congress from across the 54 states, territories, and DC for your support of your National Guard. Thank you for the opportunity to serve with you, learn from you, and lead our nation's greatest treasure, America's sons and daughters. It has been a tremendous honor. If you were looking through a transcript of the past four years, every engagement with our troops, every discussion with our allies and partners, every conference, every speech, and every office call on the Hill, you'd find a phrase that comes up more than any other, and that is, at the end of the day. For instance, at the end of the day, the National Guard exists to fight our nation's wars, or at the end of the day, it's about the people who make the mission possible, or at the end of the day, someone has to stand up and do the right things for our families, for our communities, for our nation, and for our world. For me, today actually is at the end of the day. And in my final assessment, I believe we as the National Guard have kept our promise to America, our promise to be always ready, always there. We never missed a deployment in support of combatant commands around the world. We never missed a call to respond to our communities in times of need. We never wavered in our commitment to our allies and partners, and we continue to strengthen those vital relationships. We faced down a pandemic, widespread protest and civil unrest, and an unprecedented threat to the peaceful transition of power. We deployed overseas, deterring our competitors and defending our nation. We cleared away debris from devastated communities, offering food, water, and hope in the aftermath of hundreds of disasters. We stood with our Ukrainian partners against Russia's horrific invasion continuing training and support that's endured for more than 30 years. Now, to be clear, these are not my accomplishments. These are the accomplishments of our 440,000 soldiers and airmen. They are the accomplishments of citizen warriors. These are the accomplishments were earned through their service, their sacrifices, and those of their families. It has been my greatest honor to represent them. Because at the end of the day, what matters most is not what at all, it is who. People are the foundation of our armed forces and our nation. People with their personal dreams and worries, their individual strengths and flaws make everything we do possible. They are the teammates we serve beside. They are the citizens we defend. They are the families we love. 
Constitution we swear an oath to begins with the words, we the people. And those who wear the cloth of our nation swear a solemn oath to that Constitution, an oath many of us have taken dozens of times. We cannot and must not become numb to the power, weight, and responsibility of the words, I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Those words remind us of our grave obligation at a time when competitors threaten to topple the rules-based international order and political division undermines our national stability. But I am a man of faith, faith in God, faith in the institutions that underpin our society, and faith in good people and great leaders to do the right thing. And I have full faith the soldiers and airmen of the National Guard will continue to answer every call from our nation, our states, and our communities, as they have since the first formation of Massachusetts almost 400 years ago. While the past two decades have radically transformed and professionalized our organization, the past four years have sharply focused our importance and value. The challenges before us only loom larger. The global environment grows ever more volatile. Our competitors and adversaries are formidable, but then again, so are we. We are the nation that established the principle of federalism and the consent of the governed. We are the nation that led the rules-based international order. We are the nation built on the freedom of worship where speech, press, and assembly are protected for all. We are the nation that is the partner of choice and the most prized ally in the world. We are the nation that lifted billions out of poverty champion democracy and fought back the forces of tyranny. And every single one of us has helped make that possible. These are the values we defend. This is what we vow to uphold. We have a duty to lead and lead by example, both in and out of uniform. We have a duty to preserve what our forebearers fought for, a duty to continue the quest for a more perfect union. We honor the traditions enshrined in our Constitution, free speech, the rule of law, the separation of powers. We honor the humanity of our fellow Americans and all that unites us. We are one country, the United States of America. We are still the nation that established a worldwide precedent for openness, democracy, and freedom. We are still the nation where good people make great things happen where there are men and women willing to sacrifice everything for the sustainment of all we hold dear. We are still the nation that inspired me, a kid from Happy Camp, California, to raise my right hand and promise to defend our Constitution with my life. And we are still the nation that inspired all my children to do the same. All of us are bound together by a sacred code to uphold the Constitution of our great nation and all it stands for. We are innovative and adaptable. We are prepared and professional. We are informed and experienced. We are well-trained, well-positioned, and well-led. And we will keep our promise to America because we are the National Guard, always ready, always there. May God bless you, your families, and the United States of America. It has been the honor of my life to serve beside you and serve our nation. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join in singing the Air Force and Army song. ceremony the united states army and air force are honored to have presented today's special ceremony please remain in place for the departure of the official party Thank you. All guests are invited to congratulate General Hokinson in a receiving line in Patton Hall. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.